Good evening, my name is Katarzyna Nowicka and welcome to Poland Daily News. The government has adopted a draft regulation raising the minimum salary to 2,600 zł per month starting next year. This would be an increase of 350 zł on this year's amount. It is speculated that this amount will increase up to 4,000 zł in 2023. Economists were asked what effect such a significant increase in the minimum wage may have on the Polish economy. By the end of 2020, the minimum salary will be 3,000 zlotys. By the end of 2023, this amount is to be raised to 4,000 zlotys. Three days after the Law and Justice Party chairman's declaration regarding the increase in the minimum wage, the government debated the draft regulation on this matter. Law and Justice politicians ensure that such a significant increase in the minimum wage will not affect the budget negatively. Economists have divided opinions on this matter. First of all, such an increase in wages provides income and tax revenues, which will be linked with increasing wages, as well as receipts to the social insurance fund, as it also involves higher contributions. Secondly, it should be noted that this is an increase in the cost of the entrepreneur's operation itself and ultimately the goods and services that customers buy, which is associated with the inflation phenomenon. For example, we will have more expensive food, we will have more expensive products and services. Thirdly, it is certainly a strong stimulus that is associated with internal consumption, because a greater disposition of money makes internal consumption greater. It can also drag prices. But but on the other hand, it can affect the gross domestic product, which means we will have more growth. According to economist Marcin Roszkowski, raising the minimum wage is a sign of a structural change in the Polish economy, which acquires the characteristic of mature economies and thus ceases to be characterized by cheap labor. To jest projekt, za który zapłacą przedsiębiorcy. This is a project for which entrepreneurs will pay. It is a project that will definitely benefit employees, those whose productivity will be high enough for their jobs to make sense. In some places, it will probably end with employees being released, all while raising the entire pay scale up. I understand that this is the government's idea of getting out of the average growth trap and eliminating the sectors that are still based on low, cheap labor. Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, presented new members of the Commission today. One of the official candidates for the function of Commissar for Agriculture is a Polish MEP from the Law and Justice Party, Janusz Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski's candidacy is supported by Polish MEPs in the European Parliament. Shortly after Wojciechowski was announced as a possible candidate, some of the German media mentioned the investigation allegedly conducted by the EU OLAF organization, which monitors financial malpractices. The matter revolves around the supposedly inaccurate settlement of travel costs from several years ago. It's interesting that when this candidacy was proposed, suddenly this case was brought up. Mr. Wojciechowski had a position in the European Court of auditors for three years, and no one has mentioned any discrepancies until now. It's just another attack on a Polish candidate. Mr. Wojciechowski is a really good choice, especially since the Polish farmers should be getting the same EU investments as the rest of Western Europe. He's a really good candidate. He was once a liberal. He's also a lawyer. He knows the problems of agriculture fairly well, so it seems like one of the better decisions made by the Law and Justice Party. Franz Timmermans, known by Poles for his confrontational policies towards the ruling Law and Justice Party, will from now on be the vice president of Green Deal, responsible for climate change and green energy. Franz Timmermans will be the executive vice president for the European Green Deal. I want the European Green Deal to become Europe's hallmark. At the heart of it, is our commitment to becoming the world's first climate-neutral continent. It is also a long-term economic imperative, because those who act first and fast will be the ones who grasp the opportunities from the ecological transition. This commission will be a geopolitical commission. I want the European Union, and thus the commission, to be the guardian of multilateralism because we know that we are stronger by doing together 
what we cannot do alone. Due to the upcoming Brexit, Great Britain did not propose a candidate. The Commission will have eight vice presidents from Latvia, the Netherlands, Denmark, Spain, Greece, Slovakia, Czech Republic and Croatia. The European Parliament will now debate the candidacies. The EU Court of Justice in Luxembourg is supporting Poland in its dispute with the European Commission. Poland filed a complaint against the Commission in connection with the decision made in 2016 in a matter of approval to increase the capacity of the Opel gas pipeline. The Brussels decision was, in fact, increasing Gazprom's share in the European and EU energy market. The court found that the Commission's decision infringed the principle of EU energy solidarity. According to the Court of Justice in Luxembourg, the October 20, 2018 decision about the Opal pipeline was made incorrectly, as it is against the energy supply solidarity principle of the EU. This decision was contested by the Polish government in December 2018 with exactly those arguments. Today's decision by the Court of Justice affirms the stance of the Polish government as correct. It is very good that the Court of Justice in Luxembourg took the right decision. Now it is important to make sure that Germany will obey this verdict. We are concerned because Germany did not abide by many of the previous verdicts. I hope that this time they will and that energy solidarity makes the equality between the EU countries the most important thing. This is a success for all of us, all Poles, not the government. I would tell all Poles now, it is worth believing that the courts might be independent. The appeal filed by the Polish government succeeded. I am happy that all Poles won in this case. This makes it more difficult. More so, it clearly shows that according to the EU directives, the pipeline should be accessible for usage by all operators who offer gas on the open market. In my opinion, it is a step in the right direction. One would hope that this trend is going to stay, and I hope that the Russian company Gazprom doesn't rule the EU yet. The European court agreed with our complaint, and we are very happy. Thanks to that, the energy stability of Poland is being maintained, and at the same time, the energy stability is connected to political stability. This verdict is important not only for Poland's energy stability, but also Lithuania's, Latvia's, Estonia's and Ukraine's. At the end of this year, the contract for gas transportation throughout the territory of Ukraine is going to expire. Russian energy company Gazprom has indicated that they might not extend the contract, but in the light of today's verdict, this might not be so simple. Things are getting more complicated for Gazprom. The verdict of the Court of Justice in Luxembourg has an immediate and foreseeability clause. The Brexit clock is ticking louder and louder. The British Parliament is suspended until mid-October, while the opponents of Prime Minister Boris Johnson in Westminster are doing their best to prevent him from achieving a no-deal Brexit. Johnson himself is equally determined to move the United Kingdom out of the Union within the October 31st deadline. Order! Monday's session of the House of Commons was its last until October 14th. Prorogation or suspension of the work of the British Parliament for five weeks is the decision taken by Queen Elizabeth II at the request of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Such a decision by the head of government at the time of heated discussions on how to go about Brexit has sparked a resistance among the Prime Minister's opponents. Members of the British Parliament fear that Johnson will use this time to prepare the ground for a no-deal Brexit. Exit. With negotiating a deal. <laughs> while preparing to leave without one. And I will go to that crucial summit in Brussels on October the 17th. And no matter how many devices this parliament invents to tie my hands, I will strive, Mr. Speaker, to get an agreement in the national interest. Johnson fought until the last time for the elections to be held sooner, but the parliament rejected his motion on this matter for a second time. I earlier urged the House to trust the people, but once again the opposition think they know better. 
They want the British Prime Minister to go to a vital negotiation without the power to walk away. They want to delay Brexit yet again. I think we've had quite enough of the playground politics of the Conservative Party this evening. The one thing the Prime Minister didn't say was that he was going to obey the law of this country. He, he did not say he acknowledged or accepted three votes that have taken place in this parliament. The already heated debate got even hotter when John Bercow, the charismatic Speaker of the House of Commons, announced that his current tenure will be his last. Colleagues, I would like to make a personal statement to the House. At the 2017 election, I promised my wife and children that it would be my last. The European Council summit will begin in Brussels on October 17th. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is determined to do everything he can to allow the United Kingdom to leave the European Union by October 31st and has even said that he would rather be dead in a ditch than ask for an extension on Brexit. That's all for tonight. Now on to Poland Daily Business with Aleksander Wierzejski and his guest. Good night. I'm Aleksandra Zarzycka and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. Let's take a look at the forecast for tonight. Rainfalls will appear in large parts of the country. However, cloudless sky is expected on the southeast. The temperature will range from 11 degrees in Bydgoszcz to 15 in Gdańsk. And now over to tomorrow. Sunny weather will occur on the northeast. Storm and rain will dominate in western Poland. The highest temperature we will see in Białystok, 26 degrees. A minimum will be 17 in Szczecin and Wrocław. Let's see the forecast for the following three days. On Thursday, thunderstorms will appear around Rzeszów. Friday will be a very pleasant day. Little rainfall is expected only on the northeast. Saturday will bring us lower temperature, which will hover from 17 to 19 degrees. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Poland Daily Business. We report from Krynica Zdruju Economic Forum. Our guest tonight is uh, General Robert Spalding on Washington, D.C., both United States Army and Hudson Institute. Sir, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thank you. Uh, this is, uh, Krynica is not only uh, one meeting when we see the people from China. They are coming here, talk about business. They have cheap products. They are generally very nice. And why should we have problem with that because apparently there is this row and discussion with growing China. Yeah, what we found is not only do they bring um, economic ties, but they also bring influence in terms of how our companies behave. And so I tell the story quite often of a gentleman named Roy Jones who worked for Marriott Corporation in Omaha, Nebraska, and liked to tweet about Tibet. The Chinese Communist Party called up Marriott Corporation and told them to fire Roy Jones. Of course, he didn't know that much about Tibet. He was only, you know, doing what he thought was a, a good citizen in a, in a nation that values free speech. But these are the kinds of influence that these that these relationships bring that are actually counter to to our values. Okay, because uh, we don't necessarily have to deal only with the cheap products and nice smiling people, but also with ideology and uh, some organization that's behind it. Yes, and you know, for the America, you know, when China entered the WTO from 2001 to 2017, we lost over 70,000 factories and 3.4 million jobs. So not only does it bring influence, it also has actually harmed the American people in terms of jobs. Um, but uh, that was under the trade deals. Was it fair deal? No, and that's uh, I think one of the, uh, the the false narratives that's out there that you know we're we're instituting tariffs to and that's destroying the free trade environment. In actuality, because China wasn't actually behaving according to a free trade economy, we don't have free trade, and so we're trying to institute fair trade. 
because we didn't have it until now. It was easy for Chinese companies to sell anything in the United States. It, was, it is very easy to sell in Europe because most of the tariffs are zero. Um, yet, if you want to sell something in China, it's not that easy. Oh, yeah. It's certainly a closed economy. You know, when I lived there from 2002 to 2004, I talked to so many American companies that found it almost impossible to do business. And a lot of them ended up going bankrupt because if, essentially the Chinese government doesn't allow them to compete fairly in China and then their companies go abroad and take advantage of subsidies and other things to actually uh, put pressure on on our companies and, and certainly I would imagine uh, the companies of Poland. There is also another factor to that, the 5G networks that are being rolled over by Chinese companies. So why is it dangerous for for us? For or for the democratic countries? Well, you have to ask yourself, how can the equipment be 40% cheaper than uh, everybody else? How can uh, you incentivize the deployment and how can you incentivize the financing? There must be an ulterior motive. And in fact, you know, so many companies and so many reports have come out about the back doors that are in, uh, in this equipment. Also, Chinese law says there must be back doors in the equipment. Uh, so says American law. Well, American law has to do with America. It doesn't have to do with other nations. Okay. Uh, another uh, new thing in China is this massive system of social scoring. And to what degree you are being followed by all these uh, digital devices while in China? Well, I think uh, when you look at large tech companies and their ability to aggregate data and use that data to influence you to buy things like Amazon, those same algorithms have been taken back to China along with the technology to influence the population to be better citizens according to the way the Chinese Communist Party uh, desires. Now, when you have large tech companies, not Facebook and Amazon, but Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent that are essentially supporting Communist Party initiatives, then you begin to deploy that across the world, and if they build the network, then you have this ability, both in technology and business, business to uh, observe the populations of those, of those nations and also influence their citizens to do things that are counter to their, to their principles. Okay, and you analyze their behavior using AI programs. Right. Artificial intelligence, big data analysis, social media. When you put those three together, it's a, it's a powerful concoction to essentially influence a population counter to what you know the population's principles have. Mm -hmm. How do you look at this Belt and Road Initiative bus by China? Why do they do that? Well, it's clearly an ability to harness the power, the, the, the power of the Eurasian landmass for not just economic benefit, but for the ability to deploy these networks and their large tech companies for social control. That's China of today. General Spalding, thank you very much for participating in this show. Thank you. And that was it for tonight's Poland Daily Business. Welcome back to Poland Daily Weather. Let's take a look at the forecast for tomorrow. Sunny weather will occur on the northeast. Storm and rain will dominate in western Poland. The highest temperature will see in Białystok 26 degrees. A minimum will be 17 in Szczecin and Wrocław. Let's take a look at the forecast for our continent. The highest temperature we will see in Bucharest 31 degrees, light overcast in British Islands and there we will see 20 degrees in London. In Central Europe a lot of sunlight will appear and from time to time we will see thunderstorms and rains. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Good day everyone, my name is Maria Kondzielska and this is Poland Daily Culture. Today in studio we have a very original band. He is Polish and she is Chinese and they make music together. Ladies and gentlemen, Pomponika. Hello. Hello. Wucja and Piotr, thank you for coming. Thank you for invitation. But before we listen to their story, let's hear them play. Enjoy the sunny walk by the riverside 
Piotrek, so you're not only a part of a band, but you also work in music in different areas. You're one of the co-organizers co of a festival, Strefa Cisza, so Silent Zone, which takes place in Łazienki Park in Warsaw. And it's one of the most lovely uh, classical music festivals in the city, which in fact is, has nothing to do with silence, but with a lot of music. Uh, yes, this, this, this name is uh, very interesting. Uh, well, we thought that uh, nowadays we live in such a crazy world. We are hurry all the time. Uh, there's a lot of noise in the cities. And in Poland, we have this beautiful place, Łazienki Park. And uh, it's actually in the center, in the middle of the city. Uh, but it's quite big and you can just come inside and you have lovely trees, architecture, even uh, funny uh, animals uh, like foxes, you know, different birds. And in this uh, circumstances, you can listen to music in a very relaxing way. So there's a string quartet and you can just lie on the grass and hear that in a very natural way. So we really think this is the different approach than going to Philharmony. Uh, this is more natural. You can be closer to musicians and the musicians are also closer to the audience. So there is this connection. This year you had five different stages with five different music. One of them was for children as well. Uh, do you think that when children, small children are listening to classic music, they kind of learn something more or do they develop their brains more or something like that? Do you see a difference when list ch kids or toddlers hear classical music? Well, definitely music is a language, so they are learning the, the, the language of music and the language of music can connect people worldwide. We are the great example of that. Uh, so I think it's very, very great to give uh, families opportunity to spend time together not like you know shopping all the time and there is not many um, many um, options for families with small children to go and be you know take part in the concerts or under shows. Sure, you yes. usually don't take a yes. three years old child to or two or one or yes. one year old child. Yeah but we, we so this is the different atmosphere and we are prepared for it and there is also very relaxing atmosphere. So I think it's very important that sort of concerts and nowadays there are many events like this in Poland which we as a foundation music is for everyone we are very happy about that. Could you tell us more about the foundation music is for everyone? What kind of undertakings do you undertake? Undertake. We so for us the music is for everyone so that's uh, um, that's our motto. So we we want uh, that all people can play and really enjoy the music, like amateurs, the people who love music. No matter if you are uh, one years old, 99, you still should gather together and have fun with music. There's no uh, boundaries for it. Because I think in Poland and many countries, uh, when you ask people, please sing something, I'm not professional, I won't do it. Or play something, why should I do it? Because they forget how uh, how big fun it is to play together, especially not just like um, in some professionals, yes, uh, in the classical field. So they have to practice like eight hours a day in a small flat, and then sometimes they come outside and playing for people. It's great, but actually for me personally, the biggest fun is to meet other people and create music together. Absolutely. So music education is, I would say, a little bit humble in Poland. It's not that popular. We usually don't have classes of music in primary school. And if they are, it's still, you, you don't learn much there. Yeah. Do you think, oh, is it different also in China, for example? Are you more, uh, more music, more developed in music education? Do you play at homes, for example? It's also different stories, I would say. Because nowadays in China, 
Mm, the music education is connected when about how do you go to the college. They give you points. So sometimes they make it not really for fun, but it's more for the points. But besides the points, I would say also, yes, the more and more parents trying to make the music education much more fun for the kids. And may I add something to this uh, toddler music concert? Yes. yes. So if you're really observing them, as my observation, it's like that, you know, if you're kids or toddler, you listen to some music, the most natural thing is also you will dance, you will move your body. But most of the adults, when you're growing up, you forgot how to move. That's very funny, I would say. We we'll lose the ability of dancing, which is much more natural than just singing or doing playing an instrument. But dancing is also very natural things. And I feel like not all of the people, but most of the people, if you're adult, you ask them to dance. Either they will dance some practiced choreography, or we're dancing club, we, or we have to be drunk, then we can dance. But if you're kids, you don't have boundary. You can dance whatever you want, and nobody will think, okay, you are doing silly move. No, people think it's adorable. So I think if you are doing this music education when you are little and you keep thinking that way, you will feel more relaxed about this music itself. Mm. As a band, as a Pomponica, you were also a support to many, many musicians in Poland, including Renata Przemek and Kasia Kowalska. How did it work? and how Polish audience receive your music? I think it was a great experience for us. And as far as we've heard, they, they like our music. It's a bit different, yes, because some songs are in Chinese, some songs are in English, uh, we have a few in Polish. Uh, so this is different uh, like uh, story and different uh, experience. Uh, but we, we play in beautiful places. We, 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 we play in a mm, Bogart club in Gomunice, which is absolutely magic place. And many uh, famous artists play there. It's very small, tiny, but there is this, uh, this uh, atmosphere there. And uh, we play in Powitz festival. So we play in some festivals and we always have different, um, different um, Experience. Audience experience, different audience, yes. And many times you've heard that our music is different and it's great. We even have a problem to say, what is our music? I mean, what kind of genre it is? I know, I've, I've realized that you mix a lot of genders and, and ways how to, to create it. And it's actually interesting as well. That's funny because in different period you have different feelings. So, okay, so for this period I want to just enjoy the chill. So I will just write very calm music. But maybe next three months I feel like, okay, I want rhythmic things. Mm -hmm. I want that all the time. So it will change. We encourage our audience to go online and listen to Pomponika music. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture. This is the story of a remarkable woman. Maria Zawiera Wąsowska, Negroholska, was born into a very different Poland. She comes from an old Polish noble family with long patriotic traditions. As a young girl, at the outbreak of the Second World War, she saw first Russian and then German troops in her family home. Arrested with her family and held in prison by the Gestapo, she later joined the Polish underground and fought under her uncle Remy Grish Grocholsky. In 1944, she participated in the Warsaw Uprising, fighting in the Makotov district. In this program, we hear, in her own words, the remarkable story of her life during those dark days, culminating with her heroism during the Warsaw Uprising, for which she was awarded one of Poland's highest military medals. That was on the, obviously on the 1st of August, but you joined the underground 
organization between. sometime before that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was wondering if you'd say a few words about the sort of training or preparation you received while you were a member of the underground. Not, not very much, not right. very much. We knew by, by my uncle, I was visiting him very often. And uh, he was organizing like between me and his uh, children, all the, um, uh, some, he was giving a lesson of life. How do you, how do you uh, act in such a moment or such a moment? That's fantastic, fantastic what we learned from him. Uh, and uh, of course, he, we have been going to see him rather often, rather often. And once I comment, uh, I was with him. We have been out of Warsaw because he, with some uh, guys, uh, they were checking on the uh, train uh, uh, passage, how to put something in correctly when the train is coming and that has to be blow up. To blow up the train, yes. Yeah. Excellent. We have been very, up, uh, and we have been over there during this time because that was looking like papa and children for a walk and the, they shouldn't be um, looking at us, crying what it was and how to put. I, I remember he wanted to see not when the first uh, uh, train is coming, but some wagons after third or four. That was a, a question how to do that to make the bang yeah. not at once, you know. Uh, to make it most effective, yes, cause the most damage. Yeah. Thanks. And then when the uh, order finally came on the 1st of August 1944 at 5 p.m. the uprising had officially begun yes. how, how did you how did you feel i mean presumably like i was happy yes that you I were able to happy. fight back <laughs> uh, and uh, oh one funny one funny uh, scene from there it was his second uh, child a girl then champion on ski in Poland after after all that. <clears throat> she was living uh, close to Warsaw in Lasky. I took her on on my bicycle. She was sitting here with our uh, packages that we, it was uh, for bloody stuff, you know. Um, she was sitting here and I was pedaling to put her in Warsaw that she joined her uh, regiment and then I was going to my regiment. Uh, the evening I joined my uh, regiment and uh, at five o'clock it was I was over there. Uh, I was walking to another place because it was an order and uh, I remember that I was falling asleep walking. We had during the night a little rain and I was sleepy, I was tired, I was falling asleep walking. I never forget <laughs> that because it's not easy. <clears throat> Then on, during this night, I, I joined uh, my, my regiment and next day, uh, walking under the fire. fire. Yeah, uh, to Mokotów, that is the, another place in Warsaw, I joined my regiment. And Makotov is where you were based, I think, for your fighting. Makotov is where you were based, was your main area of operations during the Warsaw Uprising. Yes, yes. And, and, and I mean, sorry, it's probably a strange question, but it, be, what was a sort of typical day like as a, as a, as a Warsaw Uprising fighter uh, in, the, in the early days of the Uprising? Uh, 
Yeah. I had two places. The army, our army, had two places. One, it was uh, on uh, Malchevskiego Street, and then after a few streets later on, it was Belgiska Street, where that was our front line. Right. And we have been in between because we had the people uh, already with wounds. We had to take care of them. Normally, it was on Malchevskiego that I will never forget. Uh, it was to the, toward the end of the uprising. There was a wounded man uh, with whom we had to stay all the time to take care of him. Uh, if not everybody, the people, the people that lived over there, they were out, out, out of Warsaw probably. Nobody, uh, nobody was there, and uh, we had to uh, take care of uh, this uh, soldier. And what it was, <coughs> we have been in the cave, and in a moment we heard suddenly the. Uh, Knocking. No, uh, shoes. Footsteps. Sho yeah, yeah, strong. And the language, German language, that was the moment, the terrible, because normally over there in the other places, the, the Germans were shooting, like killing, killing people. So we had been in a place to be killed, rather. And then I remember we we have been one, two, three, four. Here he was laying down. We took our arms like that around, and we have been praying because that was really a moment that you know you. <laughs> you feared the. Absolutely. Feared the worst. Yes. And after a moment, they started to finish their talk, and they they left. That was uh, like a miracle that they didn't uh, came down and f to find out who just kill us. Yes. Hello and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. Today we head west. Our destination is the palace and grounds at Radziowice. Situated about 40 kilometers west of Warsaw, the palace complex is a haven for artists and a welcome spot to retire to the countryside for travelers. It's a complex of classical residences surrounded by a park and it's been a cultural center since 1965. The Radziowice family first built the castle in the 1500s. During the palace's heyday, it was a residence to various kings of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. During the 17 and 1800s, the Kraszynski family gave uh, the complex its present look. And currently, the castle and the complex are visited by writers, columnists, actors, filmmakers, musicians, and visual artists. So come along and let's take a look at the Radziowice Castle, Palace, and Grounds. The weather's perfect. Let's go for a walk. And watch Poland Daily Travel. We're glad to be here for you. Here we are. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful place. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Poland Daily Travel. This time, I'm with Arthur, who's driving this uh, particular uh, fine automobile, and we're going to uh, Radziowice. Radziowice, that's right, we're in Radziowice. Ah, it's a beautiful place. And we're gonna take you on a very special tour of this very special palace complex here, about uh, 50 kilometers from beautiful downtown Warsaw. So stay with us. Poland Daily Travel. Arthur, hit it. Let's do it.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Poland Daily Travel, perhaps the best travel program about Poland ever created. I would say that, though, wouldn't I? With me is a distinguished gentleman, a conductor of symphonies and all kinds of other cameral ensembles and yep. quartets and... No, Sometimes. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you conduct? It's Pavel... Kosnowicki. Kosnowicki. I just wanted to see if he remembered his name. <laughs> and you did very well. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, we're here at the palace in uh, Radziejowice. Radziejowice. About 50 kilometers from Warsaw to the west. And boy, it's a beautiful setting. I got to tell you, we're excited to be here on such a beautiful day because I was here the first time in November. And I got to tell you, a little depressing. Really? No, nah, it was beautiful. That's why I came back. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he said, really? Don't say that. No, it was beautiful. And that's why we came back. But I said it would be nice in the summer. And I said, wow, when all these uh, trees and everything are in bloom, it's going to be a great place. You know, to, to come back, and so here we are. Um, I guess, uh, the, Pavel, we should talk about the uh, mission of this place, because it's a beautiful place. It's yep. a little gym set in the countryside outside Warsaw. Uh, what, what do you do here, though? Why is it, what, what, what is special about this place? So this is the, the cultural institution run by Minister of Culture, founded by Minister of Culture, mm -hmm. and it's called the House of Creative Works. It's some of the places when the artists of all kinds of arts can come to work, to, to e even to have some few days of holidays just to, just to rest between or before or after, after some, some work. We've got here composers writing music, some actors preparing to do to, to, to the new play or, or artists painting, painting sculptures and all kinds of, of visual arts we can imagine. And uh, how long has it been going? This uh, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, as a as an artist. Uh, as it, it's, I, I think it's some some twenty seven years. So it's it's pre pretty pretty long time. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good long time. So that's the early early nineties, isn't it? Yeah, uh, 90, 92, It 90. was existing before, but it, yeah. it 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 was called the House of Creative Work, just just something around this time, twenty seven years. And, uh, and specifically, what are you doing here? Because you're a conductor. Yep. And uh, are, what, are you, what is your mission here, personally? It's to, to be to, you're the to, vice to, to, chairman to build, or the deputy, to, to, the, 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 the deputy, yeah. the deputy director, and, yeah. and, and to, together with my colleague Eva, we 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 just planning the whole artistic season of the yeah. of the of the institution, and as well, yeah. of course, to to maintain. The, the, the whole old buildings and, and the park we, we've got here at 26 hectares. 26 hectares, yeah. big park. Big park. Yeah. Uh, lots of place to wander and find your muse, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, what are you working on now? What, what's going on in the, in the place now, particularly? Now we have holidays and we are we are preparing to to the to the new year because we we don't work like like philharmonies when it's artistic season from September to June, yeah. But but from from January to December, so so we now planning the the all artistic events for the 2020, mm -hmm. and of course thinking about 2021 and the next years, we we are almost ready with the next edition of the festival, mm -hmm. because you probably know we've got here the the Jerzy Waldorf Summer Festival. Yeah, tell me something about uh, uh, Jerzy Waldorf when we come back. We'll take a short break and we'll come back because I was reading about him. He's a very uh, interesting character, isn't yep. he? Yep. Okay, uh, Poland Daily Travel. We'll be right back after this short bumper break with Pavel... You don't remember? Kosnowicki. Excellent. Ah, <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Stay with us. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Poland Daily Travel. We're here in the gardens, 28 hectares of gardens. 26. 26 hectares. 26. Gave you a little too much credit. Uh, <laughs> of uh, gardens here at the beautiful palace in Radziowice outside Warsaw. I am talking to the conductor and the vice deputy of this uh, establishment. His name is Pavel Kahn. 
Kosnowicki. 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 Got it wrong again. <laughs> My head is like a sieve. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hold any information. No, uh, uh, Pavel, we were talking about uh, Jerzy uh, Waldorf, yep. who's a, a sort of spiritual father of the place as it exists now, right? Yep. Um, as an art mm -hmm. uh, institution where people can come and, 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 and work or take a break and think about their projects. Um, who was he and why is he so important to this place and, 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 and Polish uh, uh, art? He, he was one of the most influential critics, musical critics and art critics and journalists in Poland during the, I must say, communist period. Mm -hmm. So we gotta say that word. <laughs> yeah. it so happened. it yeah. happened, yeah. So yeah. so we, he he knew absolutely everybody, everybody from 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 this artistic cycles of of Warsaw, Poland, mm -hmm. connected to Szymanowski, to Iwaszkiewicz, to all these people mm -hmm. uh, who who really matters in in, in in this country, and and he he lived here as as a resident, mm -hmm. with with his with his dog called trombone, puzon, uh -huh. and, and this, is, this is why we... And a dog called trombone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so... Create a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is because we, we let our guests to come with pets. So, so he, he was a guy who, who just made it real. He was a spirit, and I, I believe he's now around, flying somewhere. Hello, Jerzy, <laughs> we're here. Jerzy, if you want to speak to us, make the table move or something. <laughs> we don't have a table. But make the bench move. No, no, not too much. It'd probably throw us in the water. But uh, he, uh, you said he came and he lived here. Did he just show up and they just said, well, you know, I'm not going to leave? Or they said, boy, it'd be good to have a guy like this living here all the time? Or how did that happen? Honestly, I have no idea. No. Because he was just always here. Yeah, all of it, there. It so, part of it. so, so, so yeah. it was. Since it, was, it was, was renovated or whatever, because it, it must have been renovated after the war. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. the, the history is quite quite sad. It was really really ruins yeah. after after the war. Yeah. So so and as well the, the period after the war it, it was dev devastated by by the time and, 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 and the ministry and the Polish government wanted to to rebuild it and yeah. of course we 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 see it now like this, but it doesn't look very special 30 years ago. Yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, what we see now is a total, is a total reproduction of the way it used to be, or? No, it's it, like it used uh, to be. It's not, yeah. it's not just the, the shell was invasion. Here, it, yeah, less, it was, yeah. it was. And you, the frame you can, was here. You, you can, can see it on yeah. the pictures if, if you be inside. So, so, yeah. so there are some, some shots yeah. from the production from, from 40s. It's a the place. Yeah. Look at that picture behind us. Yeah. On a day like this. But it's kind of a, it's, it's not a place that a lot of people talk about or, or seem to know about. Everybody knows about Niborov, uh, uh, for example. Uh, but uh, I, I think this, this is, place is just as and, nice. And this is, this, is, <laughs> this is why it's very special. Yeah. Because, because I, imagine all these people knowing that you, you can come here to drink coffee and you meet some famous actor. Uh -huh. So, so this, is, this, is, uh, this is the character of the place and, and it, it, it's okay, I think. Uh -huh. No, it's very good. Um, if I'm a tourist if, if, or a traveler and I want to come here and visit, what can I do here for a day or can I stay here? What can I do? It depends. If it's the time of the festival, you've got, of course, the, 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 the concerts. If you, if you are here, you can, you, you, you can go to Nieborov, as you said. Mm -hmm. And if you just want leisure time, you go to Terme Pstonov. The, the okay. sw swimming pools with the hot water. Oh, where's so that? Where's that? It's, it's five kilometers. Five kilometers and down the like down a, the Katowice, a, a, yeah, some, and uh, in, in okay. some short time there will be the very big the water park, uh -huh. and it should be open very soon. Seriously? Yeah. Ah. Well, that'll be a big attraction, I suppose, for people who want to get outside of Warsaw with their <laughs> no. kids, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but not in the winter. Yeah, unless it's no, got it's a, it's a, the, the, got a dome e over even, even during the winter. So yeah. even even now there are some some hot springs, and and the water is thirty something even even in. in Winter in the building, it's called. Oh, but yeah. it's in a building. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's not outside. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Of course, beautiful, be beautiful countryside, and if you would like to go by by bike, so there is a lot of bike Do you yeah. bicycle around here? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're not, not a bi yet. You're not, not a bicycle. Yet. You're not a bicycle. Not I heard that people can stay here, though. Can they stay? There's. You have another 
a, a small, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a it's, smaller it's, place, a it's, Duvor, it's called, yeah. uh, a villa. Yeah. Like. It's, of, of course they can, but of course they have to call us to be sure that there is something free, because basically in this beautiful time, you, we can hear now the, the pianos. Yeah, there's, the, there's, what's there, going on with there, that? There is, there is a big master class yeah. run by National Chopin, Friedrich Chopin Institute. Okay, come, we'll come right back with that. Stay with us on Poland Daily Travel. We're going to come back and talk about uh, this competition that's going on here with Pavel uh, Kosnowicki. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with me this morning. <laughs> Probably the same thing that's usually wrong with me. Okay, uh, stay with us. We'll be right back for another thrilling episode. Isn't this beautiful? Don't you like this? Come and visit. <laughs> 